Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Yo! What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, you like the video, make sure you leave a like and leave a comment. What's your favorite animal? My favorite animal right now, y'all, I've been going through some stages, is crows. And I got it tattered right here. And the reason why I'm saying that, because the video we reacted to right here is animals that shot people with their IQs. After I did some research and uh, learned some things about crows and how intelligent they are, uh, they get, I think that's the bird. I just, not going to say that. But um, <laughs> I actually feed crows outside of my apartment out here in California. Uh, these things are super intelligent, y'all. They 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 know people who feed them. They know bad people, the good people, bro. Y'all gotta do your research on crows, bro. But um, yeah, let's get the video. What are you willing to do to make your dreams come true? A gorilla named Evelyn really wanted to get out of her enclosure, and to do this, she climbed over a high fence five times and jumped over a moat. Anything just to see a giraffe. Wait, what? And this is just one of the stories of amazing escapes that happened in real life. Today, you'll learn how honey badgers imitate a house robbery, whether a parrot and a kangaroo can be friends, what zoo exercises are, and finally, which of the animals can be considered the most successful fugitive in history. Let's go. I'm telling you right now, bro. Crows number one in my list, y'all. I think crows are the most intelligent species with the brain the capacity they have, man. Cool guys. Just intelligent, course, smart. Different opinions about their fearlessness, and Steve and I even talked about it. But there's no denying the fact that honey badgers can do a lot. For example, escape from any place, and not necessarily from the zoo. The honey badger named Stoffel was raised among humans since he was very young. He was delivered to the Moho Laholo Wildlife Rehabilitation Center to make his life as comfortable as possible. They couldn't release Stoffel back into the wild. He simply wasn't adapted to this life. Well, that's what the staff at the center thought. Stoffel had his own opinion on this matter. He wreaked havoc in the rehab center. Oh, he killed smaller animals, broke into the kitchen, kicked out the staff, ran to the lions to fight them. As a result, he ended up at the clinic for two months. Eventually, they decided to protect the honey badger from the rest of the animals with the- That boy went into the lions. He literally went into the lions then. All that talk everybody talking about, don't, don't step foot in the lions in. That boy walked in at nighttime on him. What's out? <sighs> boy, so you you escape your day to go to the lion's den, boy. That's a different type of oh, black force energy right there, nice bro. Nice try. At first, Stoffel learned Stoffel to open the, was the enclosure door, and he did it together with the female. That's what true teamwork can achieve. Yes, for some time, Stoffel was surrounded by ladies, but they were released into the wild later. The keepers began to wrap metal wire around the door, but Stoffel learned how to rip it off. They built a new enclosure for him, so reliable that it was even dubbed the Honey Badger Alcatraz. But still, the Honey Badger leaned a tree branch onto the wall <laughs> and used it to... He put that thing on like he was a human! Alcatraz. But still... That boy, bro, that boy got the perfect technique of putting lip, bro! That boy could have done like a firefighter going to see somebody with a ladder, bro! On the sixth story up there, bro. This dude. A tree branch onto the wall. Oh, man. And used it to scale the enclosure. They removed the branches from the tree. Stoffel dug up boulders, piled them up near the wall, climbed on them, and walked out. The stones had to be confiscated. And at night, the keeper was awakened by the sound of a broken window. Naturally, he decided that there were robbers, but it was Stoffel who broke into the house. He escaped again. <laughs> oh, my God. Stoffels, bro. This dude gangster, man. I done went, I, I done went in the lines then. Got my lick over there. <laughs> went to the hospital for two months. Y'all patched me back up. And you know what? I'm sick of you, nigga. I got to smoke and watch my language. I'm, I'm sick of you now. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my ladder. And I'm going to go in your den where you sleep at. I can easily go back to the wilderness. I don't want that. Bro, this dude Making gangsta. large lumps out of mud in order to climb over the fence? Looks like he can use just about anything to get out of the enclosure. Oh, man. But how does Stoffel manage to do all this? 
Well, nature has blessed honey badgers with very large brains relative to their body size, and these animals became very smart. All the obstacles on Stoffel's path to freedom were just a game to him, something like interesting problems needed to be solved. Actually, all honey badgers think the same way. Scientists have repeatedly tested their intellectual abilities, but it's Stoffel who's the true escape artist among honey badgers. However, many species kept in captivity love freedom just as much. Like Evelyn, the gorilla, who lives at the Los Angeles Zoo. For all the time spent there, she got out of the enclosure four or five times. At least. She did it in a number of ways. For example, she climbed onto the back of another gorilla and from there onto the wall. The height of the wall was increased, but Evelyn still found a way to climb over it. In another attempt, she used a vine to jump over a 12-foot wide moat. And most interestingly, Evelyn did not seem to be interested in breaking out of the zoo. She just wanted to look at other animals. For example, at giraffes. Once after she got out, Evelyn swatted a bystander's bottom. Perhaps the gorilla didn't even have a clear plan of action after the escape. But we'll get back to this later. I must say that Evelyn was very careful with her escape attempts. No one, except for the passerby she slapped, felt any discomfort. Dang. Meanwhile, a male chimp named Cha-Cha, who decided that he was tired of the zoo in the north of Japan, made a ruckus in the entire district. The animal managed to jump over the wall of the enclosure, climb a pole, and run along power lines. Cha-Cha walked 820 feet away from the zoo before he was stopped. Boy, you better get down from there, bro. Tell him, man, down Louisiana, man. I'm telling y'all, man. I have seen some. Listen, in a matter of seconds, I have seen squirrel turn into deep fried squirrel from way up there, come all the way down and electrocute it. I have seen robins. I have seen blue jay birds. Get down for them, man. That's not the jogger what you want to go swing it on. And even plunged on the wires before he was, the was returned safe and sound Whoa! in his enclosure. But 1,800 houses Son, lost electricity during his escape. That's what I call a power move. In general, it doesn't surprise me that primates can escape from zoos using any opportunities and improvised means, even something like a stick. Like those two <laughs> chimps that got out of their enclosure at the Belfast Zoo. True, according to the staff, the chimpanzees are smart enough to understand that they aren't supposed to be outside the enclosure, so the animals got back very quickly. Orangutans are just as cunning as their relatives. A female orangutan named Carta, who lives in Adelaide, became the reason the entire zoo was evacuated. To get free, she used a stick to short-circuit the wires around her enclosure. Oh my. God, intelligence, bro. After that, Carter took a few more branches, leaves, roots, and other similar junk, piled them on top of each other, and climbed onto the wall. You know I believe things right here, y'all, about apes, things like that, because y'all know I'm a big believer of evolution. All right? Big believer of evolution, man. I really do feel like that we did evolve for primates, but it's a whole different topic, right? So, like, listen right here, y'all. They still got people in jail. Humans. In prisons that still find a way to break out. Through so all these centuries of us having jail and security, they still find a way out. Bro, you cannot box in the human mind. We are too creative. But I see someone make a shank with soap. Let me repeat that. A shank in prison with soap. That same soft bar of soap you got right there, at your top, they were using that to punch her. Tell me, man, the human mind, bro, you can't box this in, bro. The staff believes she did it because she lost her partner. That I mean, hell, look, the PP low. <laughs> people get locked up for it, but at that point in time, through a quarantine, people are like, hey, man, you know what, bro, man, look, we don't even know this, 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 this COVID. Oh, oh, oh I didn't even say that. Oh, I got, I got. Put that out, cause I want to get that little thing that, that you know, demonetized. We really had something right there alone. We can't talk about that, y'all. Died of a respiratory bills. infection, and so Carter was quite upset about that. Well, everyone copes with stress and loss in his own way. However, it seems like Carter didn't really realize what she was going to do after the escape. Remember Evelyn, who just went to check the giraffes and was fine after that? Carter didn't even go anywhere. She just sat quietly for half an hour. Then it seems realized that she did something wrong and returned to her enclosure.
but visitors to the zoo were evacuated anyway, just in case. Another orangutan who didn't like staying in the zoo became so famous for his escapes that he even got a Wikipedia page dedicated to him. He even got his very own fan club. Ken Allen was born in San Diego Zoo, and in 1985, he became famous worldwide thanks to a series of three escapes. Moreover, the orangutan enclosure was considered escape-proof, but this didn't stop Ken. During one summer, he escaped three times, and after getting out of the enclosure, he peacefully walked around the zoo looking at other animals. Ken has never shown cruelty or aggression towards zoo visitors or anyone else. Moreover, each time he calmly returned to his enclosure, as if his goal was not to escape, but simply to find a new way out of the enclosure. I'm bored, man. I got these humans walking on their two legs, teasing me every single day. What you mean, bro? I got fellas too. I'm looking at the same women every single day. I get bored at too. Come on, man. Let me free, man. I'm cool. You see, I'm cool, bro. I, bro I'm, I'm busting out. And I'm, I'm still not touching y'all people, bro. I'm cool with y'all, bro. Let me live. To catch Ken at the moment of escape and find out how he even does that, the zoo staff began to keep a close eye on the orangutan, but they soon discovered that Ken seemed to know he was being watched. <laughs> yeah! You can up for this! Up for this. Then people decided to act undercover, posing as tourists. They still failed to fool the orangutan. Yay! Yeah! The began to follow the example of Ken Allen, breaking away from the enclosure. Eventually, zoo officials hired experienced rock climbers to find all the finger and toe holds in the enclosure and eliminate them. It cost the zoo $40,000, and only this stopped Ken from escaping. And you could have put me back to where I come from, put me in the wilderness for free. Now I didn't cost you $400,000, bro. Come on, man. I'm cool, bro. I promise you I ain't gonna come back, man. Just let me free. Just, just, just please. Please! Man, that's a sad one, Actually, it seems like orangutans run away damn often. While Steve was selecting animals for this video, he found a lot of information about orangutans, more than about any other animal. And there's a perfectly logical reason for this. Numerous studies show that orangutans, which share 97% of the genome with humans, are among the most intelligent land animals on the planet. I just seen people had gases that look just like this. Come on, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The ones when you come out the gas station, man, and you assume you, you buy something, and then be like, hey, hey man, you got, a few, few, you got some change. Especially if you use cash, and you can't tell them no. Because they seen you just put the... Come on, man. They know who to ask. If you use the Apple Pay, they don't bother you. If you use some cash at that gas station, you come out there, man, and be like, hey, man, you, you got a few change. You be like, oh, you got me, bro. Here you go, dog. Stay up. Well, that is, we also got elephants. But you see, it's quite difficult to escape from the zoo unnoticed several times when you're an elephant. To be honest, the escape of a kangaroo also seemed like something unreal to me until I found out about what happened in a German wildlife park. Not one kangaroo, but three of them got out of the park at night with the help of accomplices. What? First, a fox from a neighboring forest dug a passage next to the enclosure and then a wild boar made the same passage, but under an external fence. It's unlikely that the forest animals actually wanted to help, but the fact remains, three kangaroos escaped, and it took a while to catch them. But maybe there's something what? we don't know about Crazy. kangaroos, and the escape was carefully planned in advance. Because sometimes kangaroos can communicate really well with other animals. Imagine you're driving along the road and suddenly notice a kangaroo on the side of the road. Basically, not the strangest scene, Unless you're in Louisiana, damn it. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, you know from Louisiana, y'all. And you know what we do? Anything that walks four legs, he goes in a skillet. So you better call them people right now. Cause that damn boy, I'm telling you, bro. My homeboy hit me up, say, hey man, can I got some kangaroo beef patties. I might be on the way to go get them kangaroo beef patties. Yeah! But don't panic. 
it's quite possible that the kangaroo just escaped from the zoo through the door opened by a parrot because he and the kangaroo are pals. This is exactly what happened in July 2022. A wow. parrot named Thor helped Baxter the Joey escape. I don't know what the two were planning to do next, but they would have to come up with oh, a new man. plan anyway because both animals were quickly caught. And now to what is this? Intelligence, Steve? man. The pushing monkeys in jail, man. To, use rocks out, man. to crack nuts. What does that have to do with zoo escapes? <sighs> okay, Steve insists. So let's talk about rocks and nuts. When it comes to the ability to use tools, you immediately think of the ancient people who used stone axes and actively evolved. But the bearded capuchins do exactly the same thing. These are very small primates that have been using tools for at least 3,000 years. Yes, they just put a nut on one rock, then hit it from above with the other one. But for animals, this is already quite complicated technology. It's man. I love seeing this. What does this have to do with the topic of the video? You won't believe it, but there's a direct connection. I love because rocks can not only crack nuts, but also break locks. A group of eight capuchin monkeys used rocks to smash a lock and escape a zoo in the Brazilian state of Paraná. Shortly after, zoo officials were only able to catch four of the eight fugitives. Yeah! One of whom was discovered wandering into a local Yeah! Restaurant. My the boy's free! Was led by a female named Ciara. Free Bobo! Was she who armed herself with a rock and smashed the lock. It's not like the zoo staff didn't suspect that capuchin monkeys were smart. No, they were aware of that and even realized that these small primates could use stones. But it never occurred to anyone that the Capuchins would break free using rocks. But you know what? I guess we talk too much about primates. We do. Time to talk a bit about the birds. Love the male golden eagle, Goldie, made even a bigger ruckus than other fugitives. He lived in the London Zoo in the 1960s and managed to escape for 12 days. Can you feel the difference? Not half an hour, not several hours, but almost two weeks. Goldie flew away from his keepers when they were cleaning his cage. And after that, he did everything to avoid being caught. They couldn't catch him, despite all the efforts and special equipment borrowed from the Royal Navy and Civil Defense Corps. The Golden Eagle spent most of his time in Regent's Park, surrounding the zoo, attacking ducks and terriers and causing huge traffic jams in the area. Drivers just circled the park, watching Goldie fly. The Golden Eagle was caught only after the deputy keeper of the zoo lured him with a dead rabbit. During his 12 days of freedom, Goldie wasn't injured and was returned to the zoo to his mate. We don't know why the Golden Eagle didn't take his girlfriend with him in the first place. Think one animal can't take over another on his road to freedom? Well, meet Archie, the groundhog who escaped the Moscow Zoo in April 2022. He dug a tunnel into other enclosures and then teamed up with an Akauchi, a South American rodent that lived close by. People discovered this by accident. You probably know that groundhogs hibernate in winter and wake up in spring. Archie lived in an enclosure with two females and zookeepers were used to the fact that he always woke up first. But in the spring of 2022, instead of Archie, females emerged on the surface and people got worried. It soon became clear that the groundhog dug his way to the bird enclosure, then Archie visited the giant pandas. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Zoo security workers also found holes in the enclosures of black curacao and Akauchi and the latter escaped with him. The story's really very exciting, but there's one odd thing about it. The news about Archie's escape appeared on the 1st of April, and they made a bunch of memes out of it. Did the groundhog really run, escape? It's not clear. But if you suddenly notice him, you know where to call. <laughs> That's amazing, man. Though no one has any doubts about Inky the octopus, he lived in the National Aquarium in New Zealand. Like that character from Finding Dory, he dreamed of getting into the ocean. Probably not because the octopus didn't like being around people. The aquarium staff believed that he just really wanted to find out what was outside. Well, just, just like anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep on giving it the same food, same thing. But it's, it's just something different. Just go out there and get it on your own, bro. You know, it's just something about that, that, that hunt. You know what I mean? And during that hunt... If you go down doing the hunt, oh, oh, well, at least you went down hunting, you know? And one day, Inky got lucky. The lid of his aquarium accidentally turned out to be slightly ajar. Apparently, the octopus waited until night 
so that there were no people around, Smart! the glass wall, climbed over the edge of the aquarium, and carefully crawled along the floor. Yeah, you ain't gonna make it down. This is clear thanks to gonna scrub up, man. Water. Ain't a lot of water out there. Over 10 to 13 feet outside the water. Surely it was difficult, but the desire to get out was stronger. Facts. Then Inky got into the drain pipe and threw it straight into the sea. And although it was a straight path, it was 164 feet long. That is quite a lot of time that the octopus spent with his body compressed. Of course, there wasn't a camera in the pipe, but I'm willing to bet that if there was, the escape would look no less dramatic than this. So the octopus ended up in the sea and then probably swam away. I got emotional on that dog. Damn. Fam. The will to survive. The will, right, like, to live, bro. He could have he stayed in there, bro. He could have chilled. He took the chance of him, he, bro. Bravo. Bravo, man. Can't box a man, man. In any case, they never found it. Good. In fact, evolution has blessed octopuses with the perfect body for escaping. First, octopuses can move on land. Of course, I stress that Inky covered a long distance outside of water environment, but in the wild, this would hardly be considered an achievement. From time to time, hunting or some other need forces octopuses to move from one reservoir to another. Also, even though Inky was the size of a soccer ball, he was still able to squeeze into a narrow pipe because that's what octopuses do. They shrink to such an extent that they can squeeze through even incredibly small cracks. But an octopus that's climbed into some tiny hole doesn't sound like big trouble for people. That is, the aquarium staff, of course, admitted they miss Inky a lot and hope to meet him again someday and all. Man, 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 do that coming back, man! You selfish, despicable humans! Watch y'all, man. Hey, he was just doing it to survive, man. That boy, go. Boy, I'm all, bro, he almost killed himself to go to the promised land. He heard all these rumors of all these sharks and all these fishes in there talking. Hey, man, it was good out there. He didn't know nothing about that. He went to go find it. And it got found, bro. Shot man, he come back. Y'all miss him, bro. All that. However, if an octopus escapes, no one sends warning messages to the locals asking them to stay at home with their door locked. Unlike with a leopard who broke free. In April 2021, three leopards at once escaped from a Chinese zoo in the east of the country. As it often happens, the animals took their chance when their cage was cleaned. The handlers shot the first leopard with a tranquilizer two days later. The second leopard was caught with a wounded hind leg a month after the flight, but the third, it proved to be impossible to find it. Chinese officials sent 1,700 people, including dog handlers and nearly 1,000 drones to hunt down the third leopard with no success. Neither the pilot on a special light aircraft nor infrared motion sensors installed near water bodies were of any help. The authorities even released about 100 chickens as live bait but the leopard wasn't fooled by that. But the most interesting thing is that the information about the escape of predators was kept secret for almost three weeks. Why? So that people continue to go to the zoo and pay for tickets. Well, and to avoid panic, maybe. You get it, right? Several deadly predators were wandering around people and people didn't even know about it. After a while, the population was notified and even got warning. I've already mentioned earlier, leopard tracks have been discovered near mountain villages. Police are searching. Everyone, please securely close doors and windows and do not go out. How would you feel if you received such a message? Well, there is some relatively good news too, for people at least. In the wild, such a leopard won't survive for long, which means most likely it'll not have time to harm anyone. But I'll get back to this a little later. But for now, what? a few words about penguins. Tokyo Sea Life Park employees were confused when they received a photo of one of their penguins swimming in a nearby river. 
I mean, they're penguins. Outside of animated movies, they're not usually prone to escaping. After counting the penguins, the keepers found that the birds were indeed one short of the 135. But how exactly this happened is a mystery. The missing one-year-old penguin somehow managed to climb a stone wall almost twice as high as itself and plot a course through Tokyo Bay. Remember that penguins can't fly. Seems like this one didn't care about such minor that boy details. Has ups, In though. general, penguins jump surprisingly well. Maybe that helped. Unfortunately, we won't discover the truth, although the penguin was caught. By the way, it wasn't easy. Catching a penguin in the water is like catching a bar of soap. Penguins are fast, agile, and damn slippery. The only chance to catch such a fugitive is to sneak up on him on land while the bird's sleeping. <laughs> In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it suddenly turned out that this penguin escaped in some entirely unlikely way. What the fuck? Because the desire to get free does. I ain't no penguins can fly. Penguin escaped in some entirely unlikely way, because the desire to get free does strange things to animals. For example, a wolf named Virginia decided not to obey the laws of nature, and in 1979 escaped from the Los Angeles Zoo several times climbing trees, climbing over fences, and walking along the branches towards freedom. The she-wolf didn't care at all that she wasn't supposed to be able to climb trees. At one point, Virginia eluded vets and zoo officials for a month, and there's still no information that she returned to the enclosure. It's quite possible that after the escape, she enjoyed her freedom and didn't even think about the fact that she'd done weird things for a wolf. Raccoons also never missed the chance to escape. And nature also blessed them with excellent ingenuity. For yeah, damn, I saw that being air. Bro, I ain't telling you that's out because you don't see them them all like that, man. Sitting in the wilderness and they getting. <sighs> Bow! On a pot, stove, it, went in the oven, came out here, on a plate. Mmm. <sighs> Delicioso. But, you think they're all clever, y'all. A female raccoon named be Nancy of trash out here waited in long enough for the right moment and decided to dig a tunnel right after a heavy rain in Somerset, England. The water softened the usually hard ground, making it easy to dig. Does this mean Missy got lucky? Yes, twice. Because of the flood, the zoo staff evacuated many animals, but sincerely believed that everything would be fine with the raccoons. And the raccoons indeed were fine, just that one of them escaped. Missy was found just five weeks later near her that native enclosure, as if she weighed all the pros and cons, assessed the risks, <laughs> and decided to stay at the zoo. In fact, raccoons are quite smart animals. Maybe Missy just realized that her life outside the zoo would be complicated, so she didn't go far. Yeah, he wasn't going to last That's exactly right what would happen anyway. I'm sure many animals escaping zoos just seek freedom. Yeah. But the harsh truth is that in the wild, they'll simply die. Remember that leopard people that killer catch? instinct out, man. So, a study carried out back. But hey, that octopus, a little squid. I think he's intelligent enough to survive, though. I think he is. In 2008, found that most captive-bred animals die if they're released back to their natural habitat. For example, there's only a 33% chance that tigers and wolves will survive in the wild. All because the animals behave quite differently in zoos than in the wild. They don't have the right skills to survive. They don't know how to get food. They don't know how to escape predators. And most importantly, they don't fear people. Often it's encountering a human that becomes a fatal mistake for an animal, but there are still viruses and other diseases. Conditions in zoos and various centers are too mild for animals to develop natural immunity to many of them. Uh. And don't forget that animals need not only to eat and survive, but also to procreate. This also poses serious problems. For example, male otters and swift foxes who used to live in zoos are less likely to mate and breed, probably because they lack social mating behavior. It's hard to compete with wild rivals. Territorial animals bred in captivity are unlikely to capture and hold any area. In general, the only way to release such animals to freedom is to place them in huge enclosures that resemble their natural habitat. Under such conditions, animals will mate and the offspring will have a real chance of survival in the wild. Knowing all this, Man. animal escapes from zoos seem far from harmless. But don't think that keepers are just waiting for some animal to escape. No, they're preparing and conducting special exercises that, okay, let's be honest, these exercises loom as ridiculous as they can possibly get. 
A human in a suit of a lion or an ostrich wanders around the zoo while other workers are trying to catch him. Yes, they're catching their colleague in a ridiculous suit. Yes, just like they would catch runaway animals, except tranquilizers, of course. And it's actually not a bad idea, but did you see that lion's face? What? The lion's walking on two feet. Oh, I want to get Steve that suit. Steve! Hey, Steve! I so they're trying to... So they're trying to basically show the people who they got on chains back there, all the animals, hey, if you escape... We're going to take your most strongest person you got right here. All right? And we're going to show you, hey, you can't go nowhere. Get over here. Get back in the cage. You're stuck here. See, you putting that in still in their mind. Dang. I got an idea. Hey, Steve. See you later. Dang. How y'all feel about zoos, man? I know some of the animals sometimes, you know, they'd be rescued animals. Some animals that just wouldn't survive normally out there in the wilderness conditions. You know, sometimes, like, it'd be... Um, uh, a bird will fall down and, you know, typically what happened in the woods and there's the bird would have getting eaten by a snake, cobra, whatever. Whatever it is, they pass by, right? Um, but sometimes he must go and save. It's kind of hard. Tell me how you feel, but I will comments right here. Everybody!